Uh, the World Health Organization says that a fever is the most common symptom, but more than 67% of patients get this dry cough that they're talking about. Other symptoms include shortness of breath, sore throat, and a headache. Dr. Jen, we were just talking to, Dr. Jen Caudill is here to explain more. And we thank you for, for coming in because you've been all over this. It's, it's been busy. And yeah. I think a lot of doctors throughout the country were, were all very busy talking about this. But you know what? It, it's better that than the alternative. Um, this right. is our chance to get out important, evidence-based, accurate health information. It matters. It's the best way to combat the panic, right? It really, really is, okay. is that you want people who, you know, kind of understand what's happening to the best that we can understand it, talking about it. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to go on and talk about this as much as possible. So there, part of the confusion, and yeah. I keep hearing this, is that the symptoms are so similar to things that many would experience anyway. Yeah. So how do you kind of tell that difference? Well, that's actually true. And we also know that 80% of coronavirus um, cases are mild. And so we're hearing that people may may have coronavirus and not even realize that that's what they have. But we think of the classic symptoms of the COVID-19, the particular strain of coronavirus we're talking about as being um, fever, cough, and shortness of breath. We know that can get worse and turn into things like pneumonia and respiratory failure and things like that. Of course, that's in a rare uh, number of cases, but it does happen. And obviously, that's what we're worried about. However, to your point, Bill, um, yes, uh, some people do have other symptoms like a little stuffy, runny nose and may feel like they have a cold. So one of the things that um, the World Health Organization points out with coronavirus is that the cough, this COVID-19, yeah. the cough tends to be dry as okay. opposed to a wet cough. And we can certainly talk more about that. But that's one of the things it doesn't necessarily say if you have a dry dry cough, you have coronavirus, but it's something that it's a particular hallmark. So we we can all hear that. And right. I think I have an idea of what a dry what cough is. would yeah. be. Yeah. Um, but but what should we be looking for to yeah. kind of define it? Absolutely. And so we, we think about cough in two different ways, dry cough versus wet cough. And once again, I do want to stress that just because you have a dry cough doesn't mean you have coronavirus. And if you don't have a dry cough, it doesn't mean you don't have it. So okay. I, I just got to be very clear. But, um, you know, we were, we were you know, corresponding offline. You were asking about dry cough. Yeah. Dry cough is that sort of like dry, like cough. There's no phlegm. There's no mucus. It's just like dry, okay, if okay. that makes sense. A wet cough is where we, you know, you kind of hear things rattling in there. There's often mucus and maybe a little bit of wheezing. And wet coughs tend to be more in the case of pneumonias, um, flus, um, bronchitis, things like that. But sometimes post-nasal drip can do it and COPD as well. But dry coughs is sort of... <coughs> with nothing coming up, right. we think of actually irritation to the throat, acid reflux can do it, medications, asthma, but even viral illnesses. Um, and in this particular case, COVID-19, we know has um, kind of a, a dry cough more so than a wet cough. They said in the World Health Organization, and you have said that the, the fever is yeah. an indicator as well. Well, it's a, it's a symptom, but it's okay. not always necessarily there, okay? okay. Um, so when should, you, when should you find out? Like, do you wait till you have these symptoms at oh, the fever? When yeah. do you? This is what I would say. At this point, you know, we know cases are increasing. And, and remember, just because you have any of these symptoms doesn't mean it's coronavirus. It doesn't mean that it's not necessarily. What I would first say is if you have these symptoms and you are concerned about having coronavirus, first thing you need to do is call your doctor. Do not just roll up in an ER. Don't roll up into your doctor's office and potentially expose others if that's what you have. You call ahead and say, what do I need to do? If you're not sure, call us anyway. You know, if you're sick and you're like, ugh, call me. Um, we can talk through it. Um, that's what you should do. A lot of people have those, they're now, I mean, I call it FaceTiming, but it's the virtual doctor yeah, thing. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, look, um, we call it telemedicine. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it you know, phone medicine, what have you. Um, many practices and hospitals, as we get prepared for potentially more cases, one of the things we're thinking about is, so how do we take care of our patients and still be safe ourselves and keep them safe? Telemedicine is one of the ways we're looking at that. Of course, it's been around for a long time. I'm a fan of it. You just want to make sure that you have a board certified doctor on the other line or a certified nurse practitioner, et cetera. Everybody has now their, their home remedy, their homemade hand sanitizer, their, their thing that always works. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about these? Or do you just kind of stick to what the doctors are saying? I, I, I say stick to the evidence. That's one of the things that I'm a little bit disappointed about and scared with. I'm doing daily videos. We were just talking about social media yeah. before I came on. I'm doing daily videos on coronavirus on my Facebook page, talking about myths and truths about coronavirus because every day I hear more. Things like elderberry will fix it. Um, things like, you know, don't do this. I heard uh, uh, spraying yourself with alcohol, um, you know, eating garlic. I just did a video on that. By the way, none of those. Where's my camera? None of those. None of, oh, here we go. 
Here you go. Here you are. <laughs> None of those will fix coronavirus, okay? Um, okay? Be very, very careful about what you are reading and what you are seeing. Make sure you're looking at evidence-based sources. Fox 29 is a great resource for this information, but the CDC and the World Health Organization do not just believe the person down the street or some random blog that has no qualifications. We have to leave it there, but what you can do, and Dr. Jen said that she's answering questions pretty much every day, Dr. Jen Caudle yes. on social media. Yeah, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Dr. Jen Caudle. Please find me. I will answer your questions. Try to bust through the myths. Do that. Expert. You can talk to her firsthand. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us.